I arrived into the Munich airport. The first hotel I stay at was in the middle of the motorway. It was full of trucks there. The truck is stopped by. They sleep there for a couple of hours and then they keep going. It was like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is not Formula One. This is far, far away from it. Hi, I'm Sergio Perez and I'm a driver for Red Bull Racing. This is the story moving from Mexico to Germany to pursue my racing dream. <laughs> Okay, so we should just start with, where else did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Guadalajara, in Mexico. Oh, we're, we're great years, had a lot of friends, pretty normal childhood, traveling around old Mexico with my dad and my brother to every city in Mexico, one race after the other. After the race, we had to drive back home, sometimes 10 hour drive. I would sleep on the car and have my uniform to get into the school. It's funny to think back on Monday morning, my dad always had to drive me straight back into school. <laughs> my older brother, he was racing in Formula Ford in the UK and I saw the level of competitiveness they had in Europe. And I knew, okay, if I want to make it into Formula One, then I have to go to Europe. But uh, obviously the next factor was finding the money. I was sponsored by Carlos Slim at the time, but he didn't want uh, to do the jump into Europe because he thought that I was too young. So I just went into the BMW website and, and found all the team contact details, the emails basically. I emailed them all to try to convince them to, to take me because I was a very good Mexican driver. And it was pretty funny because, you know, we were the time difference. In Mexico, I had to wake up uh, four in the morning, three in the morning to make uh, phone calls. And my parents were, were going mad at me because the bill was very expensive. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm calling all the teams. But in the end, I got a proposal from all the teams and they were all too expensive. And then all of a sudden, I found one that was very attractive very cheap. So I contacted the guy and the, the owner, Gunther, was very enthusiastic and there was this connection uh, through the phone. I went on that plane with a one-way ticket. I went there like, I don't know when I'm going to come back. What's next in my, in my life? I arrived into the Munich airport. The first day was minus 20. I didn't have like good winter clothes. Very cold, extremely cold. The first hotel I stay at was in the middle of the motorway. It was full of trucks there. The truck is stopped by. They sleep there for a couple of hours and then they keep going. But as soon as I arrived there, I went into my little room. It was like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is not only one. This is far, far away from it. Yeah, it was just uh, a car in, in the garage. I was totally on my own. I was so lonely. Literally, I was there all day long, like for weeks. I was just playing video games all the time because that's the only thing literally I could do because I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have internet in the place. I stayed there like for two months. And Gunther, the team boss, he knew I was very lonely there. So he was building these restaurants. And once he finished it, he told me, why well, you don't come and live there? I think it's much better than when you are, you can meet people. I was like, oh, yeah, for sure, I wanna go there. So I moved to the restaurant. The restaurant was extremely nice and in the middle of the village and uh, at least I can see people so I was just very happy to be in that place. Uh, live with one chef but obviously I had this crazy time zone so I basically had the time zone from Mexico living in Europe and the chef had to wake up very early so I was always waking him up because I was like on the computer watching the TV and so on. So he wasn't very happy with, with, with me being, being there. With this crazy time zone that I had in the middle of the night, uh, I, I got pretty hungry. So three or four o'clock in the morning, I knew where all the food was. So, uh, and all the sausages, everything, like you could literally like do a quick pasta in, in like two minutes because everything is done. So, I will go and get a schnitzel or get some pasta in, in place and, and then the, the next day he was like, oh, I'm missing some of my food. 
the chef wasn't very happy with, with me living there. <laughs> it was my second season racing cars, but that was my first season in Europe. That was great, you know, because I went to Germany, to Hockenheim, to Nürburgring, those iconic circuits. So it was the two mechanics and my engineer. They didn't speak much English and I didn't speak much English either, so we could hardly communicate <laughs> each other. Our first race, we were such a small team, only one car, and we drove into in the paddock and you see all these big teams, you know, with a lot of cars and so on, and then there is this little trucky with a single car <laughs> uh, arrives there and, and uh, everyone was looking at us like, uh, what, what you guys are doing here? <laughs> After that, the racing wasn't going that well. I was just too, too lonely and uh, the life outside the, the racing was very difficult. That really brought my, my performance down a lot and it was always like, well, maybe we don't do the next race and so on. I could see the other drivers like with the trainers and so on, I had no idea. Well, I was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe I should just go back home and, and keep with my studies. But on the other side, I was thinking, no, I cannot give up. Uh, once I return to Mexico, I will never come back. So, well, maybe it's worth just giving everything and, and fight for it and, and try to make it. I knew that if I keep doing well, if I do well in the season, that maybe I, I get a second opportunity, you know, with a, with a bigger team called Carlos. And, and I could see that they were motivated as well. They sent me to do F3, British F3. Everything just changed and I came into a fantastic team. They put me a trainer. Yeah, they just made me a, a much better driver. Now it's getting serious, you know. I'm, I'm like the other drivers. I cannot stop until I'm a world champion, you know, I'm not going to give up. When you look back and take a moment to reflect on what you've done, how far you've come, I've been extremely lucky to have such a good career in, in Formula One. And it just started from a crazy project, from a crazy kid, to bringing in the people at 4 a.m. in the morning, not speaking English. I'm just very extremely proud of, of that kid. No matter how crazy your dream sounds, it can definitely be possible. Thanks for watching, click and subscribe.